I can go back to the government, and we will, and say, wait a minute, our government dollars were used to purchase the bulldozer that killed Rachel. That's illegal under U.S. law. You need to enforce U.S. law. When you see ambulance crews who should be protected and insured internationally, bombed and killed, know that you are in Gaza. The point of Nuremberg was to create law that would hold individuals accountable, even if they'd been ordered to do what they did. And Robert Jackson, the um, prose chief prosecutor of Nuremberg, who was from the U.S., said during those trials that if the people who were prosecuting those Nazis weren't held accountable in the future to the same standard, then the whole thing was a charade. As American Israeli governments see it, security is separate from human rights and not subject to accountability to international laws, established laws of warfare, or to civil society, or even to their own citizens. Russia, she was one of them. She was one of the international activists who was killed in Rafah, in the south of Gaza, simply because she fought for the freedom of humanity. There's always food shortages, chronic malnutrition among children, among pregnant women, poverty, unemployment, an environmental disaster. In fact, the United Nations says in 2020, if there's not a change in Israeli military policy, Gaza is going to be uninhabitable. It's a real irony because, because the whole point of Nuremberg was to find, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that it was to find Nazis guilty of the Holocaust. And then here, the, the state of Israel is thumbing its nose at Nuremberg. Daily, systematic um, strangling of, of Palestinian life there. And it's, it's not just the rockets and the bombs and the housing demolitions. It's that every day saying, you know, in East Jerusalem, oh, you can't build a second part to your house. There's a building code against that. Or, oh, you have to pay $10,000 more than the general Israeli to do that. Oh, you want water? Oh, you're in the wrong zone. You can't have water hooked up to your house. You're in the wrong zone. Oh, you want to go to court? Oh, you can't go to that court. You have to go to the special Israeli military court because you're in this zone. And, oh, you want to get food? Oh, sorry, we've stopped all food delivery to that part of the West Bank. Briefly, the story of one family, the Al Samuni family, who lived on the outskirts of Gaza City, and this is during cast lead. The Israeli uh, military surrounded the area where this extended family lived, all ages, children, grandparents, great-grandparents. The family was herded into a number of houses. The houses were bombed. Originally about, initially about 23 people were killed. People were calling out on their cell phones for help, for for rescue for the wounded. The Israeli forces surrounded this extended family neighborhood, would not let the ambulances in. The International Red Cross couldn't come in. Children were left for three days next to their wounded and dead parents. I would only suggest that you ask, well, how long would you live under occupation? Uh, how long would you tolerate a life like that? And just let them sit there and, and consider it. How long would you suffer a foreign military occupation. We're talking about people's lives at borders uh, being held hostage by 18-year-olds with machine guns. Right? Some